Horizon Forbidden West 2002's PlayStation 5 game is finally out on the PC. But was the wait worth it? Let's find out. Hey everybody, my name is Warwick and welcome to Warwick Reviews, where today we are checking out the complete edition of Horizon Forbidden West. It's released originally on PlayStation and it's finally released on the PC. So very exciting and we're going to talk about the game, what it's all about, my thoughts and feelings, how it plays, the tutorial, the settings, you know, all that good, good stuff and hopefully have a good time with it. But if you are new here, give us a like and a follow if you would like to. You can leave it at the end of the video or do it right now if you want and uh, let me know what your thoughts and feelings about this game if you've played it if you're happy to see it on the pc if you played the playstation version what you thought and disliked love to hear about what you think i want to say thank you to gorilla games and corsair for the game code for review i really appreciate it but yeah we'll get stuck in so horizon forbidden west is a sequel to horizon zero dawn and it continues with our main character alloy who's continuing in this sort of dystopian robotic world in basically trying to save the world save the land and figure out what's all going on i will say if you haven't played the first game do not worry there is a very very cool fmv video which basically explains the first game who you are, what's going on. I will say if you've not played it and you want to play the first one, go play it. It's a very good game. And also the video does spoil the twists as well in the game. So if you don't you want to experience that for yourself in the game, play the first one. But if not, this will outline basic story of what's going on so you won't feel like you've been left out. You can get straight into the game and carry on as though you have played. You got this video really cool, narrated by the late Lance Reddick, and he's basically explaining the game, what's going on, bit of a cheek in his narration as well which is always good to see and then you get into the menu so you got horizon forbidden west or horizon 2 forbidden west i should say <laughs> a little two snuck in there and then you've got new game set accessibility and extras and they will say with this game as i like to do with all games is check out set accessibility i feel like having those options allows more people to play the games and it's i think that's always a good thing i will say with horizon forbidden west there's a lot of settings here which is great to see so you've got some standard like text privacy settings. You've got quest finding, waypoint finding, waypoint marking. So a lot of like HUD visibility, you can change to how you want it. Either exploring or dynamic if you want to. You can change camera shake. Weapon will slow down. There's a lot of different options here which you can change, which is really, really cool to see. You've got graphical settings. So obviously with the PC, you can change a lot of different settings. You can change it how you want, how you tailor it to how your PC works. And you change different things. I just kept it on, I think, the, the default that I had when I started the game. You've got game pads. So you can actually change the game pad and mouse and keyboard button layouts. So a lot of times on PC games, you normally only have mouse keyboard remapping. But a controller, if you use a controller, doesn't normally allow that. With this, you can. So you can actually change the whole layout of your buttons to do exactly what you want, where you want, which I think is a really cool touch. It shows there's been a lot of work put into this port. So that's really good to see. And then we go to accessibility options. Accessibility sort of narrows down some of the settings in like general display and stuff. So bring like sort of if you just want to do accessibility, it sort of like narrows down into this one subsection where you'll find more in the other settings. But like I said, you've got different hards. So you can change the markers, you can change how they look, you can change how you hold or toggle, how to run, how to pick up. So you can pick up animation or change that. You can have shield wing and mounts for those roads. You can change the sound effects, you can change the audio mixing, you can display subtitles, you can turn off tinnitus sounds. Even got some called Talius Phobia Relief, which I think is really, really cool. I've not heard about it until playing this game. So there's a phobia. So you can turn this feature on to ease Talasophobia symptoms by improving underwater ambient visibility and allowing you to breathe infinitely, regardless of story progression. It may impact some story moments, but I think that's a really cool feature because I know some people have a phobia of the sea of water and stuff. So having a feature where you can basically, you know, not have that fear of drowning and stuff, I think really cool thing to see. Like it's not something I would have personally thought about in any game or just wouldn't think because for me, I haven't been affected by that. So it wouldn't cost my mind, but to have this element or this amount of care and attention thinking actually, how can we make our games better for our players? I think it's a really cool feature. So it's good to see. It's really, really cool to see. But yeah, so big thumbs up with the settings and accessibility from this game. I think they've done a great job with that. It seems to be a lot of accessibility to allow this 
game to be played by as many people as possible, which is always good to see. So you go through the settings, do all that. You can change different good difficulties. You've got story, easy, normal, hard, very hard, or ultra hard. A lot of settings. I don't normally see this many settings. Maybe I think maybe Persona. Persona has like six or seven different settings, but normally you get an easy, medium, and hard, where this is very much like here are all these different options. So you can go straight into a very ultra hard or story or however you want. I played, I believe I did normal. And then you, you got a bit more about the guided and explorer. So this is the assistant. So you've got a minimal HUD information. Look at the world to find your way. So explorer, so you're exploring. Or if you want, you can have it where it will guide you, where you have markers and icons on screen to assist you on your journey. So again, doesn't take away anyone else playing this type of game. You can play it how you want, but to have these options available. So someone might go, you know what? I like these types of games, but I really struggle to find my way at points. It's, I get frustrated quite easily. Having these extra options allows someone to enjoy the game in their way, which, I mean, how is that a bad thing? But once you go all through that, as you can see, you are struck by the beauty and the world that this game is creating. If you've not seen these games before, you'd be awestruck. But even if you have, you just look and go, wow. I was blown away by seeing this. And this is all rendered in-game. So what you're seeing now is actually a cutscene, but it's rendered in-game. So you're seeing all these details, like just like the light with the trees and everything. That's just absolutely stunning. And I was like, I didn't know my PC could do this. This is one of the most technically beautiful games I've seen in a while and probably the most beautiful game I've reviewed, definitely reviewed, if not played on my PC. So we see here, there's like an, a narration going on with Alloy, basically how the world's still not where it should be. There seems to be this like red sort of fungus virus attacking the lands, seems to be killing animals and plants and stuff. And I was trying to figure out what's going on and trying to sort of help the world. You've got this poor animal being affected by this red plant thing. It affects you as well, so you have to be careful. We're trying to explore, basically get an idea of what's going on and how we can save it because we are potentially destined to be the one, the only one to save the world from its disaster. And it's not seemed to be going very well. <laughs> and then you learn a bit more about the story. About Again, you don't have to play first one, but if you play first one, you get more of an idea, but there is a lot of narration that helps you know of the story so you don't feel like you're lost. You're like, I understand the character, you understand the whys and stuff, and you're, you, you know, you're not feeling like you're lost while playing this. You get from the cutscene and you start your game. It's seamless and I just had to stop, just look at the world around me. I was just like absolutely awestruck. Just absolutely incredible. Like there was a lot of talk when this game came out on PlayStation 5 or some other games where the graphical capability games on there wouldn't always be able to be ported to PC. PCs are very powerful, but you know, there was a lot of technology from, from PlayStation saying that, oh, there's, you know, there's some elements that would be better translate as well. And sometimes ports don't always do justice to the original. If you've played games, you've played a port or something, you're going, wait, how, is, how have they messed us up this badly? I'm happy to say this handles and looks incredible. Again, I've got a 3090, so it's not the most powerful graphics card. Obviously, on one of the top end side of things, but it ran it flawlessly. It didn't have any issues. It ran a wonderful, like, at least 60 frames, if not more, I believe. And just everything about it handled great. It looked wonderful. It's just, I was just... Everything about it just so, so good. And after my awe in all of the graphics and everything else about it, we learned about the game. So you learn about the basics, picking up things, there's little side quests in the tutorial elements. You've got climbing, you've got picking up, and then me just looking around again, just taking in all the sort of details and the beauty around it. I'm just like, oh my God, this is so cool. And then I sort of got together again, learned about this sort of virus plant thing, learning about the world a bit more, learning about different mechanics. So climbing, abhaling, you know, go swimming as well you can do. And then you get to sort of a big part of it, well, about battling enemies and how that works. So you can tag them. You have an option where you can either go all guns blazing or you can do sneaky sneak and you have like assassination moves and stuff. I tried some of it and some of it didn't go very well because I was a bit trigger happy. <laughs> but there are elements how you can play this game depending on the enemy, which I think is really, really cool. And then you start learning a bit more about what's going on, what other mechanics, so there's like a grapple hook, which you can use to climb things or like break things open to get through certain elements, learning about the sort of parkour elements. And, you know, it's a very good tutorial. It eases you into it. You learn things as you go. You feel like in your control. You don't feel like you're overwhelmed by so much stuff. Very good job of establishing the world and what it's all about enough that you don't feel overwhelmed straight away. 
One of my favorite things about this and of games generally is the photo mode. I love a photo mode. I'm sure a lot of people do. And this, I can happily say this is one of the best ones I've tried in a long while because there are some out there which you don't seem to get a lot of features. It's very basic where this one, as you can see, there's so many elements. You've got like lens presets. You can go in so deep and you've got focal lengths. So much options in just a photo mode. Like I zoomed in quite close, but you can just see just like the details in Alloy's face and stuff, you can just zoom in. And also there's a way you can actually have Alloy track you. So when you move, that actually the face and eyes will actually follow you. So look at the camera, the different frames and stuff. There's little modes. So there's different poses you can do, which is really, really cool. I think I made myself look like I'm dropping over the fox, which is might be a bit disrespectful, but that's fine. I'm sure Fox doesn't mind. But yeah, it's just the photo mode was incredible. Like just there's a amount of things you can got facial expressions, face paint lens flare you can hide the place you just want the scenery different frames and it's just there's so much in this photo mode which i think is a testament to the game as a whole because you can just tell the amount of love and passion in horizon forbidden west every element that i experienced felt like it was there for a reason and they went okay how can we make this for this the best of this how can we make this photo mode the best it can be? How can we make this the best version it can be? And I think with that, it shows just how good this game is. I have an absolute blast with this game. It's gorgeous. It looks so good. It handles so well. I don't. I think I maybe noticed tiny frame drops, maybe like cutscenes going from action to cutscene. But outside of that, in game, it handled flawlessly. It felt great. It looked just absolutely incredible. Like the style of it. I love the style of it anyway with the abandoned sort of earth with like robots, like mecha stuff, but just the character features, the character emotions, the characters movements, the enemies movements, the landscape. It just feels so lived in and it's just everything about it just feels so intended and just looked. It's not like, oh, let's just throw this in. Let's just throw a motor photo mode in. Let's just throw this mechanic in. It's like, actually, no, what are we going to implement and how we're going to make it the best it can be. And I think Guerrilla Games have knocked this out of the park, especially being with a port. This is a proper PC game. Like they've fully utilized the technology and the advantages with PC gaming, because again, with PlayStation or other consoles, you are not hindered, but you are restrained by the graphical power of that particular console where PCs, you are basically limited by how much money you have to add upgrade stuff. So you're able to fine tune stuff and, and play it how you want. And like I said, I've got a video of 1390, which is it's one of the higher angles, well, not the highest one, but again, just it looked great, handled great, and I just had an incredible time with it. And again, just every feature about it, like the battling was really fun. There was a lot of elements you can do. You can do sneaks or you can go full blown. I just went fully in because I was just, that's how I play it normally. I mean, hacking the slash. If there are enemies you can try, you can use your arrows, you can use expertise, so you can try to get weak spots if you want to by using your skills. And you've got like a photo mode, which is incredible work. You can just, I can't say enough good things about this game. It's just, I had incredible time. It's fantastic. They've definitely listened to the feedback from the critics from the first game. And I do feel like this is everything off horizon, but better. Like they fully utilize their world and everything about it. And I just think this version, the complete edition is a perfect, perfect way to experience this type of game. If you have a decent PC, I feel like you will not go wrong with this version because you get all the bells and whistles with the complete edition. And I feel like this game is something that needs to be experienced by everyone because just, yeah, just, I cannot sing my praises enough about this game and yeah, want everyone to check it out. But thank you for watching. Again, thank you to Greta Games and Corsair for the game code for the review. I really appreciate it. My name is Warwick and I normally stream on Twitch. So twitch.tv forward slash Warwick. You can find me out on Twitch. Find some more review videos. Check me out there. I'm trying to do more as I go. I really enjoy doing these types of videos and they seem to be doing pretty well. So hopefully we'll get to do some more. But make sure you like and subscribe and hit that bell as the, as the cool people say. <laughs> hopefully see you in the next review or two. But thank you very much for watching. Please take care and we'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.